The student interest in this idea is just off the charts. I mean, literally, you could just put a course called Philosophy as a Way of Life on your books and it will fill up. I, I submit to you. Immersive assignments are a distinctive feature of philosophy as a way of life pedagogy. It's not the only thing there is to philosophy as a way of life pedagogy. It's a very important aspect. And they have two goals, I think, which they usually are seeking simultaneously. On the one hand, they're trying to help students, learners, better understand these historical traditions. So if you try to actually live out certain practices, uh, if you do things that Plato or Confucius uh, recommended to their own students, you, you sort of get into the mind of Plato or Confucius in a way that I think isn't as possible just from reading the words. So there's a kind of historical understanding that these immersive assignments uh, enable. But obviously there's something else going on too. There's a kind of uh, personal growth, ultimately this idea of becoming a different person or a better person. Now the nice thing about the philosophy as a way of life approach is you can do selected assignments and bring in elements of that to your courses without uh, complete redesign. So in my history of ancient philosophy, I've added in some of these assignments, try interrogating uh, someone in the way Socrates would and it might make you more or, or maybe less sympathetic to what, what you read in the Apology. I've taught philosophy as a way of life twice at Fordham. The second time I did it, I was a little bit more daring, and I took an idea from Steve Engel at Wesleyan, which was, so study Stoicism or study Buddhism or study the Jesuit way of life. Pick one of those and then try to live it out for three days. So live out as a Stoic or as a Buddhist or as a Jesuit way of life. And then uh, report back and say, what is it that I found very insightful about this way of life? How did this accord with my previous commitments? How is it opposed to them? And almost to a person, the people in my class at Fordham thought that even if they were coming from some, say, religious tradition that wasn't Buddhist and they were studying Buddhism, they just found great insights in that tradition. Or if they were secular and they were studying the Jesuit way of life, they found insights in that tradition.